fellow student, I'm VK Koza from Ashlands and Tivet College, based at Mlomati Campus, under the program Office Administration. Today I will be assisting you with New Venture Creation Level 3. New Venture Creation Level 3, it consists of four more topics. The first topic, which is identify internal and external stakeholders. The second module, which is the selected structure of a workplace or organization. The third module, which is the basic human resource principle in the new venture. Though, when you get it on the syllabus, it says basic HR principle in the new venture. Then the last topic, which is implementing a business plan for a business operation. For today, we're gonna start by looking at the first topic, which whereby we identify the internal and the external stakeholders. Now, first of all, let us look at what are we talking about when talking about a stakeholder. When talking about a stakeholder, a stakeholder can be defined as any person or group of people who has an interest in the business and its abilities to achieve its objectives, then those are stakeholders. Now, on these stakeholders that we're gonna talk about today, some of them are found inside the organization, while some are found outside the organization. Now, those stakeholders found inside the organization are called internal stakeholders. And as they are called internal stakeholders, it therefore means they have a direct influence in the business enterprise. And those that are found outside the organization, they are called external stakeholders and have an indirect influence. Now, let's look at the examples of these stakeholders. We're gonna first look at an example of the internal stakeholder. The first example that we have under the internal stakeholders, we have the first one, which is the employer. The employer is the person who employs employees to come and work within the organization. The second stakeholder, which is the employees. Now, employees are the people who are carrying out the core business of the organization. We also have the managers, who are the people who manages the employers or the employees within the organization. And also, there is this other person whom we call the owner, who actually had the interest to start the business. And lastly, we have the board of directors, whom are the people who take decisions within the organization. Let's look at the examples of external stakeholders. Under external stakeholders, the first example will have the suppliers. Suppliers, these are the people who provide the organization with the products or the raw material. Let's make an example with a TVET college. At TVET college, remember, we are looking at education and training. Our suppliers are gonna be the organization that provide us with textbooks, be the organization that provide us with tables, chairs, and other equipment. Those are the suppliers. Then we've got customers. In a business environment, we've got customers who comes and buys the product and go. In TVET sectors, we can say customers are the students. Then we've got the trade union. Example of trade union, it is SATU, it is as well as Nehau and other unions. Then we've got competitors. Competitors are people whom or other organization whom your organization competes with 
in terms of the product that you are providing. Remember, when we provide products, the products that are the same, then we have competitors. We also have the government. It is an external stakeholder. And it does have an influence in our organization with the laws and regulations that they put in place. Then also the creditors. Creditors, these are people whom we buy goods or services on credit and pay them at a later stage. There are so many external stakeholders. Remember, it differs according to an organization. Now, let's look at the diagram of various stakeholders. In the diagram of the various stakeholders, the first thing that we have, it is the organization. Then within the organization, then we then have the employer, whom is the person who employs other people to come and provide the goods as well as the services within the enterprise. Then we've got the employees who are being employed by the employer. On external stakeholder, then we'll have the competitors, we'll have the customers, we'll have the trade unions, we'll have the suppliers, we'll also have the financial institution. When talking about financial institution, example of financial institution, we are talking about the banks, we are talking about all mutual, and we also have the special needs. Then also have the media, and lastly, which is the government. Now, one thing that we need to keep in mind with these stakeholders is, it is important to win and keep the trust of these stakeholders, because the success of our organization lies on them. What, what makes us to say that? Remember, our organization, our organization, it's in the center. This is our organization. And this is our suppliers. And this is our customers. Now, the success of this organization lies from this supplier. That the supplier must provide us with goods and services. Then the organization then sells these goods to the customers. Now, if the supplier can supply us with the products, but we don't have customers, then the business won't be successful. So as an organization, we need suppliers to provide us with the product. At some other stage, they provide us the, with the product with on, on credit. And we also gonna sell the product on credit at other time, we're going to sell the product cash. Now, when we sell the product on credit, when they pay us, when they pay us, we then go back and pay the what? And pay our suppliers. So, it is important then to keep and win the trust of these stakeholders. Now remember, how do we keep and win the trust of our stakeholders? We're going to win them by always being reliable to them. To the suppliers, when they provide us with goods and services, we then must pay them back. To our customers, we must provide them with quality products. Another thing, it is not easy to satisfy all stakeholders at the same time. The reason being is their requirements differ. As stakeholders, we require different things. We don't require the same thing. Now, so it is important 
for us as an organization to know the stakeholders' requirements, to know what the stakeholders require. Let's look at the examples of these requirements of the stakeholders. Remember when we were mentioning stakeholders, we mentioned an employee. An employee wants the business or the organization to continue providing them with a job at a fair wage. While the owners of the organization want the business to operate prof profitable so they can receive their share of profit. Remember the main aim of running the business or the main aim of the owner to start the business. It was for him or her to have profit. Another thing, as customers, as one of the stakeholders, one of the stakeholder, they want the business to provide them with quality product or service and at a reasonable price. Then, because their, stake, their requirements differ as stakeholders, now let's look how we can plan on determining their requirements. They say we've got six steps. The first step that we have is for us as an organization to identify the stakeholders. For example, we look as an organization whom are our stakeholders. At Atlanta Nativet College, our stakeholders, the first one is students. We identify the student. The second stakeholder are the lecturers. The third stakeholder are the support staff. Then the last stakeholder, let's say it is the management. Under management, we're gonna include the principal who is the CEO of the college, the deputy CEO, and the academic, the deputy CEO and a cooperative, and let's also include the deputy CEO and a finance. Now, both of these people are the stakeholders within the organization. Then after we have identified them, we then have to now move on the next step. They say we identify them, then we list them. We've identified them and we have listed them. Then now we then have to identify their needs. How can we identify their needs? We can identify their needs through brainstorming. Brainstorming is whereby we sit, then we now think broad about it. Or it can be done through what we call one-on-one -on -one interview. Or it can be done through a group meeting, a document analysis, or a competitive product. Now, when we identify their requirements, remember, they don't require the same thing. As students, they require education. Lecturers, they want teaching equipment. The support staff, they also require supporting equipment. Then the, the, the management of the organization or of the college, they want results. So now, how can they identify this? We say they can do it through brainstorming, one-on-one -on -one interview, competitive product, as well as document analysis. Now, as we have identified their requirements, the next move we need now to, to draw up a specification. We then draw up a specification. A specification, it's a list 
that indicates what it should be done for the stakeholders to get their requirements. After drawing up the specification, then the specification need, need to be completed. After completing the, the specification, then requirements are prioritized, put in order of importance. Now, when we talk in terms of prioritizing, we are talking about putting things in order. Which one we must start first with, then follow up until to the last one. Then the last thing that we're going to do is requirements are given attribute for the purpose of tracking and reporting. After we have identified the stakeholders' requirements, we then have to build a strong relationship with them. Remember we said we need these people. The success of the organization lies on stakeholders. Ashland Zen Tibet College, Her Tibet College, other colleges within the country cannot meet their objectives without students. Colleges cannot meet their objectives without lecturers, support staff, as well as management. So the success of the organization lies on these stakeholders. And relationship in an organization, it is the most important thing. Let's look at what is a relationship. Relationship can be defined as the interaction between two or more parties. Keep this in mind. You can't build a relationship alone. It can be built between two or more. Then that interaction between two or more parties, we then call it a relationship. Why should there be a relationship between employer and the employee. Remember we spoke about the employee. It is the person who employs the employee. The employee it is the person who carries out the task or the core business of the college. The first reason why we build a strong relationship with our employer as employees or the employee with the employers, it is because we want to reduce conflict. The second reason is to improve productivity. The third reason to increase employees' loyalty. Looking from the first one, when there's no conflict, the core business of the, of the organization shall run smoothly and the productivity shall increase and it will improve. And employees' more loyalty it is increased. They become too loyal to the organization. The fourth one, it's easy to delegate a person whom you've got a good relationship with. And the fifth one, as in the organization, there is no conflict. It is easy for employees to concentrate on tasks on hand. Remember, if there is conflict, it is not easy for you to perform your duties as an employee. Each and every day when you wake up going to work, you become demotivated and you always go there to attack issues. But if there's no conflict, then it's easy for you to carry out your task on hand. Now, how do we improve this stakeholders relationship? Because we need the relationship with, within an organization. The first way that we can use to improve stakeholders' relationship, as an employer of the organization, the employer must get close to employees on which way? By spending time with, with them. How do you spend time with them? By organizing wellness. Then it's where now you can spend time with your employees. Keep in touch with your customers. How do you keep in touch with your customers? 
you do what we call after sales. After sales is when now, after the customers came and bought a product, you call them to discover if they are satisfied with the product. Or after a customer have come and got a service, you call to discover how was the service rendered unto them. Again, we need to keep in touch with our suppliers. Remember, without these people, it's not easy for us to satisfy these people. Then we need to keep in touch with them. And we are not going to only keep in touch with these people whom we always have contact with. Keep in touch with other suppliers whom tomorrow you can contact and get a product. Maintain regular contact with other service providers. I said, when we keep in touch with suppliers, we're not going to concentrate with this supplier. Also look at other suppliers whom can provide you with the product that you want to provide. And be trustworthy and reliable. The last one, deliver the product or service on time. So if you're going to do these six basic things, then it's easy for you to win or to improve the relationship within the organization or with your stakeholders. Now, let us have an example with a company called Well Seated. They say, under Well Seated, Mazina Kata owns a chair manufacturing business. She acquired the business from a talented carpenter. The carpenter used to design red seats for KFC. The business was not doing well. So, Mizana took it over and like the Devon July and also the surrounding community. She employed an assistant manager, Sipo, who supervised all the factory staff. Two carpenters, John and George, administration clerk, Lydia, and also a cleaner, Beauty, who report directly to Sipo. The first question that we have, from the case study, Identify four stakeholders. Within the case study that you are provided, identify four stakeholders. The first stakeholder that we have is going to be the founder of the organization, who is Mizana Kata. The second stakeholder is going to be the employees. Who are the employees? It's going to be Lydia, it's also going to be SIPO as well as the, the cleaner. Then the third stakeholder is going to be the event organizer, who is Devon July. And the last stakeholder is going to be the community, which she was also providing the seats to. The second question, let's look at the strategies well seated could use to improve the relationship between the employer and the employees. The first strategy is going to be getting close to your employees by spending time with them. The second one is going to be do questioning and answering session with employees, whereby you do a one-on-one -on -one or you can call them into a meeting and do the questioning and answering. The third one, direct communication between the employer and the employees is important. Never ever in an organization do an indirect communication. The fourth one, build strong relationship with them. Then you're going to be improving it. And the fifth one is going to be evaluate and you need to improve on your relationship. Remember, you need to stand constant. You need to keep on improving on your relationship 
with your stakeholders. Now, let's do a recap on what we have learned today. Doing on a recap on what we have learned today, we were talking about stakeholders. We first defined what is a stakeholder, which we say a stakeholder can be defined as any person or group of people whom have an influence or have an interest in a business for it to achieve its objectives. Then we said these stakeholders, they are divided into two. The first one, we said it's an internal stakeholder which is found within an organization. The second one, we said it's an external stakeholder which is found outside the organization. We then mentioned examples of these stakeholders, which we said under internal stakeholders, it is the employer, the employees, the owner, as well as the manager. Under external, we said it can be the suppliers, it can be the investors, the media, the government, the general community, and we said there are so many. And we said it's important to keep relationship with them because the success of our organization, it lies with them. Without organization, we said the organization will never be successful. And we say how to do that? Keep regular contact with your suppliers. Keep regular contact with your employees. Also contact other service providers whom they are not within your organization. We look at strategies to improve stakeholders' relationship. Then keep all these things. Then your organization then is going to be successful by doing so. For more information, if you still assist, need assistance, you can find us at our website, which is ethlanzencollege.co.za, or on Facebook, Ethlanzentivet College, or you can tweet us at Ethlanzentivet College, or on YouTube, Ethlanzentivet College. I thank you till we meet again.